it's time for another vlog. Hey there, this is the Technovangelist vlogging experiment in day eight. Wow, I don't know if I've ever held a, kept a habit, a new habit, eight days straight without missing a day. That is quite, quite amazing. So what did I learn? This is the topic of the vlog each day. What did I learn? Well, I forgot to mention something yesterday that I learned the day before about the presentation, uh, the keynote presentation on Wednesday at Saturn was spectacular. Uh, it was, it was this topic I didn't think I would ever care about. You know, I, in fact, I mentioned to him later on, somebody at an airport once said, oh, you're from Boston. What do you think of the Celtics? Or something like that. And my response was, as is typical for me, oh, uh, Celtics, yeah. No, I've never even seen a hockey game. So that shows you my knowledge of sports uh, in general. Rowing, I, I know a bit about that from college, but everything else, no, nothing at all. And this guy was a, a guy named Ricardo Valerdi. He's an associate professor, a systems and industrial engineering director, sports management program at University of Arizona. And he talked about concussions. Now, I know about concussions. I know they're bad. It's when you get hit in the head and the brain kind of rattles around a bit. And there's different levels of concussions that you can get. Uh, and, you know, football players get a lot of concussions. But, you know, in the presentation, I learned that, um, you know, like, uh, women's soccer gets a lot of concussions. Apparently, they're really violent on the, on the field, you know, and they're doing those headbutts. Um, and another group that gets a lot of concussions, or, or enough to be on the, on the radar, is uh, cheerleaders, because they are being thrown about. And uh, often, you know, if, if the person below them doesn't catch them, they're just falling onto a hard surface, uh, whether it's a, a board, you know, a wooden floor, or uh, just the field, which is hard. So they get a lot of concussions. And, but this, he was really focused on the football side, on the football players, and American football. And he has this virtual reality app that he and his team have built and uh, you put in the put on the goggles and you're standing there waiting for the punt the the football coming towards you there's some part of the game where you know the ball's coming towards you you catch it you start running into the pack and everybody's there to try to stop you and he showed a video clip of somebody getting hit and their helmet being thrown off and the way he falls and there's this particular way the arms go that's kind of a sign of he has no clue what's going on and and then he's on the ground he's out for a while and it takes him a, a while to come back and then he never really comes back he can only play for another season or two and then he's done and he talked about another one who another foot apparently famous football player who uh, had committed suicide and they looked at his brain to see what was going on afterwards and so they've created this virtual reality app because apparently players if they get a concussion you know there are all sorts of rules about when somebody's taken off the field you know maybe if they've if their helmets come off they're off the field if they you know there's certain rules if you don't fall into that that category of really bad stuff then it's up to you to decide and players will th say oh no no it's, it's not that bad i'm dizzy but it's not that bad i can handle it put me back in and when that happens, you know, this VR app is, the, the idea of the VR app is to show players what happens when you experience a concussion, a concussion. And many of them will see that, that, yep, that's what happens when I experience a concussion because I've had it happen, so I know those symptoms. But then it shows you, okay, here's what it looks like two days later, or three days later, or later than that. And here's what it looks like if you report it and you get taken care of, and here's what happens if you don't report it and don't get taken care of. And, and the time, what it looks like after three days is quite significantly different. So basically what happens, you get hit. So you catch the ball and this other player is coming in and slams into you. And you, the first time there's a little bit, ooh, that's a little weird. The second time everything gets a little fuzzy and everything gets a little fuzzy in the, in the app as well. And the th next time everything gets fuzzier and now you're seeing, you know, two or three t things. 
and it gets worse and worse and worse. And in fact, it gets to a point where you know, you're supposed to, when looking in the goggles, you see a little red dot in the center, and when you move it to the button and click, that moves you on to the next step in this game. Uh, it gets to a point where you can't really figure out where the, you know where the red button should be, but you can't quite see where the buttons are, and they're all like moving. It, it's, and they showed a video of somebody, one of the researchers actually holding, or somebody in their research lab hold, you know, with the goggles on, and, uh, and the video of, of the football, and you see him catch the ball and then get slammed into by the player, and you see him physically step back, and like, whoa, he actually felt that. And so that was spectacular. I, I, I asked the guy if he, there were all sorts of sensors in the helmets, and yes, there are. They're, they're coming in more and more. Um, so soon, as more players have these things, we'll see what real concussions actually look like and what kinds of symptoms they might actually feel and and maybe take players off more proactively when when they have experienced some sort of concussion and of course i expect any kind of you know putting in sensors into a helmet yeah i've done sensors on a raspberry pi but i don't jostle it i, I mean if i bump it the the leads fall out so coming up with a sensor design and, and uh, processor design that can deal with those types of bashes has got to be kind of difficult. So anyway, that was a, a fascinating talk. The, the other thing I learned was not as, well, a little disappointing. I definitely, I, I did a little bit of research because I, I need to find a different solution to this problem I've uh, been thinking about for a while. So one thing I do, uh, one thing I talk about a lot are step functions from Amazon Web Services and Lambdas. Again, Amazon Web Services. So Lambda is uh, serverless, serverless functions. And, you know, there's other things on Google and in Azure. <clears throat> but uh, Lambda also has the benefit of being on AW with AWS, there's step functions. So step functions are a way of orchestrating multiple Lambdas to work in a workflow or state machine. So normally uh, anything that happens within each one of those lambdas, you know, your, state, your step function might have 10 lambdas and each of those lambdas writes to a log file. And that log file is in CloudWatch logs. And going to any one of those uh, buckets for the CloudWatch logs, you look at the logs for that one and then you go change, change gears, move out to a different bucket and look at it in that one and then change gears and look at it at the other lambda. You know, I mean, you might have to look at three or four lambdas to figure out what didn't go right when you expected it to go right. And it's a, it's a context switch and it's just difficult to get around, uh, around the UI. And so one of the solutions to this is to migrate or to uh, forward all the logs from CloudWatch into whichever uh, logging tool you like to use. There's many out there. The company I work for also makes one uh, or has it built into the product. But uh, whatever you use, now you've got one set of logs for all of your lambdas and all of your step functions. The problem is that the lambdas don't know anything about the step function that called them. So the, there's this workflow and it calls uh, lambda one and then lambda two and then lambda three. But if there's multiple people going through this uh, step function, now you've got uh, lambda one, lambda one, lambda one, lambda two, lambda one, lambda two, one lambda one, lambda one, lambda two, lambda two, lambda, you know, it's all these lambdas that are, are on top of each other and it's hard to see which one is part of the original flow. And there's no way for the lambda to know which step, since there's no way for the lambda to know which step function it was, was what called it, it's hard to get that flow straight. Now, of course, the solution is, you know, if you just want to see what the flow is, you need to have some other value. And so I'm using it, my, my excuse, my, my reason for needing Lambda and step functions is to, uh, for a LTI module for uh, Moodle or actually Totra. Um, and so I just need to have that, that ID that connects all of them to come from somewhere else. So the place I'm going to, I'm actually, there's a learner ID. That, well, there's a learner ID and there's, a, I guess, a request ID that comes from the 
uh, from uh, Totra or Moodle. I Totra is this fork of Moodle that's a little bit more commercial. So Totra is going to, uh, when it makes the call to LTI, it's saying, hey, I am this student in at this step. Um, so I've got this kind of unique ID I can probably create. And I just need to put that into each Lambda um, so that it stores it into the logs as well. That way I can connect everything together. <clears throat> just, uh, it wasn't the happy solution I was hoping for. I was hoping there was going to be some way I could uh, force the step function ID to be in the Lambda so that it, when it writes out to the logs, it would just be there. But it just doesn't, it doesn't do that. So I need to come up with this other method for, for doing that. Yeah. Uh, gives me something else to play with. Maybe uh, one of these days I will get that going. Okay, so that is it. Uh, this might have been a little bit longer um, a video. Ooh, 11 minutes. i to edit that down. Okay, well, thanks so much for watching, all two of you. And I look forward to talking to the camera tomorrow. Eight days, eight days. I've got to eight days. That's amazing. Woo! Bye. No, really. Bye.